Hi everyone, this is Andrew at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center and this is Fossil Friday. Now last week, we talked about why the necks of plesiosaurs were so long as a means of catching their fish. And that got me thinking, why are the necks of sauropods so long? And that's actually a really interesting topic that we're gonna talk about today. Now, about a year ago, or over a year ago now, it's been a while, we discussed the feeding mechanics of sauropods, how they ate based on their heads. And that's an episode called Chewing the Scenery. I encourage you to look that up. I think it's a pretty good episode if I do say so myself. But we discussed that they don't have chewing teeth in their jaws, which saves time when they're eating food, and that's fantastic. But there's more to the story, and that's the second part of it right now. So, chewing some celery right now, decided to give up on the carrots. Not chewing your food saves a lot of time, but it's not enough when you're talking about something like our super source here. He's the subject for today's Fossil Friday. The problem is energy. Now, chewing does take energy, that's true, but not a lot of energy. We're not expending too much while you chew. Where energy becomes a problem is in terms of weight and in terms of the food that you're eating. So let's talk about weight first. Jimbo probably weighed around 40 tons when he was alive. And Remembering how hard it is to eat when you're doing paleontology. But anywho, supersaurs would have weighed close to 40 tons. So it, you're requiring lots of food, literal tons of food every day just to keep going. And when you're that large and you need that much food, you want to be eating things that give you a lot of energy. And as far as we can tell, these sauropods weren't really. So like I'm eating celery right now. Celery is full of antioxidants and good salts for your body. It's a very healthy food. But one thing you'll never hear someone say about celery is that it's an energetic food. It's a food that gives you a lot of energy to move. In fact, it's, there's barely anything there. It's mostly water. So you can see where this would be a problem. And we, you know, the f healthy foods that we're supposed to eat are things like, you know, fruits and vegetables, things that are full, like superfoods, as we like to say it. But Supersaurus wasn't eating superfoods. Lots of fruits probably hadn't evolved by the time Supersaurus was alive. So it was eating mainly ferns, palm fronds, and conifer needles. So you're talking about an animal that requires a lot of energy to sustain itself, and it's eating low energy foods. And so it needs to eat constantly, it needs to take in as much as possible. And so chewing, that helps get a lot of food, but that's not enough, which brings us to the subject of today, which is next. And let me give you a little demonstration. So I've got my broom here, and imagine I have to use this broom to sweep the entire museum. Now that is going to take a lot of time and a lot of energy on my part, because one of the problems with using a broom is you have to sweep everything here. And then you have to move over here. And you have to move over here. So you see, that's the issue with sweeping. Not only am I having to move to get everything, I'm moving my entire body in order to sweep up everything. It's a big expenditure of energy, even though you might not think so at first. Is there a better way to do this? And there is. And that better way is right here. Good old vacuum cleaner. The innovation of modern man is a fantastic thing to behold. See, this makes things a lot easier. And notice, one of the great things about the vacuum sucks everything down. So, uh, a vacuum makes it a lot easier. And one of the best parts about it is, this isn't best example, of course, is a strange code. I can whip this thing around everywhere and reach a wide amount of area, and all I'm moving are my arms and the hose itself. So what does this have to do with sauropods? Well, let's look at Supersaurus, and since he's a little big to fit on camera, I brought the scale model down with me. It's usually in my office. Think of the sauropods as giant vacuum cleaners, where the neck is a giant vacuum hose. What this was used for, and what we think its primary use was, was to make it so the body didn't have to move while the animal itself was eating. So if I was sweeping the floor, imagine, I would be hopping from place to place to place, expending energy. If I'm vacuuming, I stay in one place and cover a lot of ground. Here with this Supersaurus, its body can stay in one place, and look at how much of a range the neck has. That's a wide area to cover, and Supersaurus's neck, as you can see, is extremely long. 
so it would be able to cover a wide expanse of area and reach all the plants in that area without much effort, without moving this body. So that is a key point to explaining all of this. When you're eating foods that don't have a lot of energy, you want to use as little energy as possible. And moving around a 40-ton carcass to get food is expending a lot of energy over a long time. So you're talking about Supersaurus staying in one spot, using its neck to reach as much food as possible, and then just hoovering that food down, swallowing it whole, not processing it at all. Just getting as much as you can in, in a, as much time as you have. And again, even with a vacuum, that takes a lot of time. So sauropods would have spent most of their waking hours just searching and eating food. And that's the consequence you pay when you're that big and you're eating things that go give you a lot of nutrition and energy. But that's still not enough. There's another step to this whole process, but we don't have time to cover that today. So we'll have to save that for another episode of Fossil Friday. So until then, like this video, share it, comment, tell us what you think. We have an Instagram, we have our Facebook page, make sure you like both of those. And be sure to tune in next week for another edition of Fossil Friday. So, hope you found this enlightening, hope you enjoyed this, you know, I should probably tie in the title, that's a good thing. Sauropods, yes, they didn't expend a lot of energy to get their food, so you could call the sauropod neck the ultimate adaptation for lazy. See, there's a method behind the madness. So until next time, this is Andrew, the Wyoming Dinosaur Center, keeping your Friday fossiliferous.